As the fighting rages on between Israel and Hamas, the division on college campuses is growing too. At Cornell University, the tension between student groups supporting Israel and student groups supporting Palestine has reached a breaking point. NBC News correspondent Antonia Hilton spoke to the two groups separately about the divide, and she joins us now. Hey, Antonia, good morning. Good morning, Savannah. For weeks now, on college campuses across the country, there has been immense heartbreak and pain as students who are directly affected by the fighting in Israel and in Gaza try to at times have conversations, but more often right now, they are retreating into their own communities and circles. And what we hear from students who are Jewish and have connections to Israel and to students who are Muslim and have connections to Palestine is that it's simply too early to come to a table and to think about peace or dialogue. Take a look. For weeks now, Cornell University's campus has been divided. Heartbreak over the war in Israel and Gaza is transforming campus life. We're getting threats on campus, so it's like, how can you mourn? We asked students from the Jewish organization Hillel and Students for Justice in Palestine if they wanted to meet together. Both groups declined. If you have family and friends in the region, it's not an intellectual exercise to debate and discuss. I don't know what both sides sounds like. I don't know what both sides looks like. I don't even think it's possible in this moment. Jewish students like Zoe and Simone, who are the descendants of Holocaust and pogrom survivors, say they've been horrified by people tearing down the posters of hostages. Every time I see one of them ripped or vandalized, it's like a knife into my chest. I saw one on campus just as I was walking home from class one day, and it's, they were crossed out the name of the four people in the picture, and they're a family of four taken um, by Hamas terrorists, and it said, free Palestine. Palestine is not going to be freed by vandalizing hostage posters. Palestinian students like Melak say some classmates have denied her people even exist. She says her grandparents were expelled from their homes in 1948, and her relatives now live in Rafa City and the 75-year-old Jabalia refugee camp. My family is still there, um, and like I grew up hearing the stories of like what Israeli militia did to them, like the family members that they killed and how they got away with it. And one of my aunts is she witnessed a bomb, Israeli airstrike drop in front of a bus right in front of her um and it's been hard to reach out to them with the service being cut out so frequently it's hard for them to get access to water food electricity my cousin is a paratrooper in the israeli defense forces he's 20 years old and within the first day of the war 20 of his friends were killed or taken hostage how would you describe the climate right now what you're seeing what you're hearing on campus i've noticed a lot more stares, a lot more unease just around me being around. There was an instance where I noticed someone taking a video of me from his car and like he wasn't even really trying to hide it. I wasn't doing anything. I was just walking out of Friday prayer. It's been immensely challenging to be in this campus when I'm seeing my peers march down the streets where we have to walk to get to class every day, chanting things like from the river to the sea which we've seen as really a call for genocide of, or an ethnic cleansing of Jewish people. Our coalition, our individual organizations all came together and condemned anti-Semitism because we utterly believe anti-Semitism is abhorrent and has a deeply violent history. Some of those classmates tell me that some of the chants and phrases like from the river to the sea to mean the extermination of Jews. What do you have to say to them? Okay. Everybody in this vicinity, regardless of religion, of race, of ethnicity, should live free on the one state, on the one secular state with equal citizenship. That's what it meant. And the question I have to ask people then, where is it from the river to the sea, Palestinians shouldn't be safe? I want peace in the Middle East too, just as much as anyone else. My problem is with that slogan in specific, not whatever message anyone thinks they're sharing with it because Hamas has used it. It's been appropriated by a terrorist organization. So you can't say it anymore and think that it means peace. What would you say to a Palestinian person who said that when they hear the word Zionist or Zionism, that they think it means me and my family need to leave the region, that we have to leave our homes? So the definition of Zionism, right, is the self-determination of the Jewish people to their ancestral homeland. Saying that we have a right to a land and a right to exist as a people is not saying we're, we're agree with the right-wing government um, in Israel right now. Cornell has released several statements in response to student fears. 
increasing security, and promising new programs to fight anti-Semitism and to bring in experts in Jewish history. The university is taking it very seriously, right? We've seen support on a federal and a state level, uh, which, is, which is really comforting, really nice. As people who are Muslim or Arab on campus, we see the administration clearly has a bias. Cornell's initial statement did not mention Islamophobia or Palestinian people. They tell NBC News they condemn all forms of discriminatory bias. What would it take to bring the temperature on campus down to maybe just slightly open the door to either healthier dialogue or, or more dialogue here on campus. I would really encourage students who are interested in dialogue to reach out to me, to each other. I think it's something that's really scary and really hard. For no one on this campus to use the slogan from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free again. I think it's just too painful for Jewish students to hear. Until I can be seen as a human, and until my humanity of being a Muslim, of being a Palestinian, is seen first, then it's hard to have a conversation. I already know going in, if that's the first question I'm being asked, that I condemn the killing of innocent civilians, that I'm not a terrorist, that they can't see past my scarf. You know, Savannah, what really struck me in my time on Cornell's campus is just how much language and the different meanings yeah. these words hold to people of different communities Absolutely. impacts this debate and makes it really hard for people to sit down and just have a conversation about their pain. Simple things like what Zionism means, mm. what from the river to the, sea, to the sea represents to people, they truly have such different cultural contexts. And so long as people believe that their own classmates, the people who live in the room down the hall from them, right don't want them to exist or don't respect their humanity, it's really hard to see a path forward. And mm -hmm. I think college campuses, in a way, are, of course, representing what's happening all across our country and the world right now. Absolutely. Such a microcosm. Great conversations. Antonia Hilton, thank you so much. Good to have you here with us. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.